burlap sack by Jane Hirschfield. A person is full of sorrow, the way a burlap sack is full of stones or sand. We say, hand me the sack, but we get the weight, heavier if left out in the rain. To think that sand or stones are the self is an error. To think that grief is the self is an error. Self carries grief as a pack mule carries the side bags, being careful between the trees to leave extra room. The mule is not the load of ropes and nails and axes. The self is not the miner, nor builder, nor driver. What would it be to take the bride and leave behind the heavy dowry? To let the thin-ribbed mule browse in tall grasses, its long ears waggling like the tails of two happy dogs. That's from the book I'm reading, Being Human. And it's another metaphysical poem. The first time I read it, it was the day that um, my Mac broke down. I was quite calm about the computer breaking down, surprisingly, because I really thought I'd freak out. It would just be a disaster. It was backed up, so maybe that's why I was calm. But anyway, I read this poem and it just made me just remember or get present to that I am not the actual computer, do you know what I mean? I am not that computer and at the end of the day it's not a life. What was the worst that could happen? I'd have to spend whatever, twelve, fifteen hundred pounds on buying a new computer. That was like the worst that could happen. No one was going to be injured. Funnily enough, like a fool, I posted on Facebook, you know, that I'd, um, my computer's gone down and the reactions were really interesting like my beloved friends oh my god if that was me I would die and it's like no you wouldn't die you would just carry on like you really wouldn't your heart would not stop if your computer broke another beloved friend of mine on Facebook was like yeah same thing happened to me lost my iPhone in Thailand and what have you and actually felt quite free of the responsibility and the um you know, the ability for someone to be able to just get you, contact you. So I was like, hurrah, I'm not the only crazy person out here. The reaction was, was interesting. And then I read this poem because, you know, I didn't have a computer, so I went into my garden and um, read my book. And it was so perfect that this, this was the poem that I opened the book to. And that's the thing I love about poetry, it's, it's healing as well. And this poem is particularly so. To think that grief is the self is an error. The grief is not the self. It's a thought. It's an emotion. <clears throat> but it's not the self, meaning that it's possible to overcome it. To, um, you know, that grief, sorrow, it's not insurmountable. We can actually move beyond that. That's the power of human being. The turn in this poem is the line that says, self carries grief as a pack mule carries side bags. You know, that's, that's imagistic. You can literally see the mule and the side bags and they're not connected to the mule. They're just being carried by the mule and then not only they can be removed. They don't have to, they're not, they're not an appendage, they're not stuck to the mule. In the next line she says, being careful between the trees to leave extra room. And I take that to mean, you know, to take care of yourself, you know. It's all about loving yourself and knowing that you are um, lovable and capable. And it's important to take care of yourself, whether that's, you know, pampering yourself or treating yourself to something or having a day away or, you know, a bubble bath. The mule is not the load of ropes and nails and axes. So it's like you're not your work either. The self is not the miner nor builder nor driver. They're open-ended lines and they allow the meaning to flow over the end of the lines. You know, you can interpret them beyond what it actually says on the page. I'm not sure what she means about leaving behind the heavy dowry. Ah, oh, see, funny you ask these questions, you get the answer. I guess a heavy dowry is a, um, a, a really a wealthy one, like a, 
a good one. <laughs> it's a hefty dowry. There's a lot of riches or um, however you say that, but it's a it's a big dowry, a heavy dowry. That's just clicked for me. To let the thin rib mule browse in tall grasses, its long ears waggle in like the tails of two happy dogs. It's really imagistic and it's kind of a fun image to end on. It's kind of playful and you can just sort of imagine these two happy dogs frolicking. Even with the kind of pitiful um, idea or image of the thin ribbed mule because it's probably been carrying those pack those packs for too long. So that's what happens if you don't let go and let God. You just end up skinny and unwell. Thin ribbed. Um, so we've got to let that stuff go. I think those last two lines also are again just telling us to be kind. Be kind to ourselves. Be kind to each other. Just be kind. Um, I just think it's a really beautiful poem. And reading it now with you and um, sort of looking at it again and uncovering my interpretations, it's, it just seems more and more to the poem. Jane Hirschfield's uh, an American, like a contemporary American poet, and she's very well published and quite well um, awarded. I have heard of her before this poem. I can't recall exactly any other poems from her, but um, yes, I'm loving this poem, the burlap sack. It's a bit of a talisman poem as well, where you want to come back to it because it, it's it, it's it's um, useful. You know, um, it just reminds you just to keep present and live in the moment, really. So thank you, Jane Hurstfield. It's a goodie. So, I hope you um, enjoyed listening to that poem. If you're into poetry, tell me what your talisman poem is or a I will see you next time. So my name is Esther and this is The Living Fruits. Thank you for watching.